Well, it's about fucking time. Not bad. Looks like you figured out the instructions, okay? You've got some demon flesh on your bumper, but that's the way the world is today, I'm afraid. Who? Uh... Oh, me. Oh, I'm nobody. I I'm just a guardian of metal. Oh, wow, great. So, you want to help me fight demons and stuff? Nah, I'm not a fighter. I'm more of a, what should we say, a keeper of timeless secrets, that's all. Prove yourself worthy. Maybe I'll share some with you. For instance, did you know that this world was once ruled by an ancient race of titans? Now they were something. They took every part of that old fire beast. They took his blood, his fire, his steel flesh. They even took his scream. And they made that car there. And a million other things, including music. Fucking beautiful music, man. And when they rose to the heavens and became gods, they left instructions behind. How to make cars, music, the whole deal. Do you think anybody noticed? <laughs> nah. Bunch of wankers. No one figured out any of it. Until you, whoever you are. So, you must be somewhat worthy of the gods' favor, I suppose. So listen, if you do something that pleases the gods, they might reward you with a fire tribute. <laughs> when they've paid you enough tributes, come see me. I'll share some more secrets of metal with you. Like uh, how to turn that little beast you got over there into a real monster, among other things. Got it? The gods have yes, already paid me something tribute. for your driving pleasure. Wait, what do I have to do for a fire tribute? Please, the fucking gods of Metal Man, figure it out! Right, okay. I'll be back soon, covered in Metal God love. Oh, God. In the days of darkness. Inside there's dying to get out. Shock of green! In the beginning, all was darkness. That was how the first ones preferred it, for they were so hideous that even they could not bear to look upon themselves. Then came the Fire Beast, a giant monster of flaming molten iron who roared across the sky like an angry comet. His metal body burned so brightly, it illuminated the world and all its hateful creatures. He was Ormagodon, cremator of the sky, and the first ones loathed him because his light forced them to see themselves as they truly were. So they hid underground and dreamed of a day when they could murder the fire beast and rid the world of his light forever. Hey, you guys roasting weenies or what? We heard a bunch of enemy scouts were gonna cruise through here soon. So we're hiding out. We're gonna ambush them. Wait, so you're hiding out by lighting this big fire? Uh... You here to criticize the ambush or help the ambush? If you got room, I'd be honored to fight by your side. I don't see anybody. I think I'll be here. Oh, 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 I know you're not I don't think I can do a little heal in my throat. I think that hurt.
The first ones spent their days feeding from Madronol, the teated tree of drinking. They suckled from her bark a thick nectar that flowed up from her roots, which penetrated the ground so deeply they reached even into the untouched place. There, a beautiful being named Aetulia sang to the roots of Madronal, and the tree turned her song into nourishment for the ungrateful creatures above. One day, the greediest of them sneaked into her sanctuary and trapped Aetulia in a cage, forcing her to sing only for him. That is how he gained unlimited power over all creatures and became their first and most terrible king. Looks like something inside there is dying to get yeah. out. The king used the song of Aetulia to lure the fire beast Omagodon to the ground, where the first ones trapped him and tried to douse his flaming body with mud. Rather than be extinguished, the mighty fire beast let out an earth-shattering scream and exploded like a sun. A million pieces of his steel flesh shot into the ground, veining it with ore. His fire flew up into the sky and became the sun. There was so much blood it flooded the world, drowning all the first ones as it formed the oceans. His death cry was so loud that it echoes throughout the world to this day. Low creatures felled the god Ormagodon, but his death gave the world the elements from which a new era would rise. Blood, fire, noise, and metal. From the oceans of blood came new life, the worst of which was the Tainted Coil. With the twisted forms of the First Ones, but the angry power of Armagodon, they were hated, feared, and almost exterminated. Instead, they were saved by a majestic race of titans who inherited the strength and size of the Fire Beast and the purity and beauty of Aetulia. They took pity on the small creatures and adopted them as pets. They hid their deformities with severe restrictive garments, and the coil endured the pain because, more than anything else, they wanted to look exactly like their beloved, merciful masters. Love found I see you guys have already met Lars and Lita, and, uh, Ophelia? Where is... where is Olofs, anyway? Uh-oh. Ophelia! Oh, no. You didn't try to free the girls, too, did you? No. They're already free. We have to take her to the Killmaster. Lars, no. Lion White knows about us now. We need to lay low. Out of my way. 
You have to stop him. Please. Stop him? I'm gonna give him a lift. <laughs>